This is the current state of rum. That was cool. This is what it looked like exactly one year ago at launch. And one more time so you know I'm not cherry picking. Oh, oh my. I don't even know what hit me. Oh, fuck. How did we go from moves that we thought looked cool to moves that actually make you feel like a god? I sifted through hundreds of hours of gameplay to answer that question because the evolution of this game led me to one of the single greatest combat sequences I've ever experienced. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't just watch that without context. Otherwise, how would you appreciate the anime level showdown that this clip is? So let's start at the beginning, which is where this footage is from. The launch trailer one year ago. And it's still on their Steam page today. That's what people think Rumble looks like. To be fair, that's probably what Rumble looks like for you if you're just starting out, because it's an incredibly hard game. Yeah, you did it. I did Your it. first three hit combo. That's but good. how do we get hit? In the wise words of Thormac, it comes down to two words. This game is the <laughs> definition of emergent gameplay. We don't have 20 moves, we have thousands. And we're still discovering moves a year later. How is that possible? Well, to understand the complexity that has emerged across three key pillars of the game, let me get you up to speed with the 20 base moves. There are five structures to summon, three hits to hit those structures with, and four movement options to get around and five ways to modify or interact with structures. All done by one character. Let's compare that to something like Tekken. So let's say we have 27,000 things to keep track of in this game. There's just too much goddamn sh I can promise you for Tekken 8, that's gonna be much larger. My main king has 187 moves and one of them he just swings the dude around. Comparing the two, you'd be forgiven for thinking Rumble was a low skill ceiling game. Forgiven, yes, but I can't do anything about the embarrassment you're gonna feel by the end of this video. The question still stands though. If there are only 20 official moves, how did Thormac get to the thousands figure? Let's look at an example. As a white belt, you only have three moves unlocked. Disc, pillar, and straight. Pretty quickly, you'll ask yourself a question. Have you tried punching your own disc yet? You just discovered the speed disc, one of the fastest moves in the game, and you haven't even leveled up yet. Yeah, he did it. That's it. That's actually nuts. Just be aware, Rumble obeys Newton's yes. third law. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The knockback. You gotta watch out. Guys, earthbending isn't magic. It's a science. Grow up. Later, you unlock jump. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Sure, it seems very obvious when I paint the picture, but when I was a green belt, it blew my mind. However, not everyone was convinced of its usefulness. That didn't matter though, why not make it even more dangerous? See, we only had one small map at the time, so it's pretty much guaranteed to throw you off it. So Magic have made a safer barrier. If you dash, pull in your thumbstick to do a 180, then jump, you could at least see where you're going. And it was just as fast. But that didn't matter, he wanted to make it more dangerous again! So he did the dash 180 speed disc jump! People started discovering all sorts of moves and combos, so that's why the first combo spreadsheet was made. And then later, Kenny created the Rumble Kai Discord for move sharing with videos. And the disc jump progression is just one example. But let's put that aside for now, because we are getting way ahead of ourselves when you haven't even learned the damage system. Each structure has a strength value. Grounding a structure gives a plus one. I should drop things on the ground? No. Ground is a move you unlock. Wait. It's called stomp. Is this a Mandela effect thing to you guys? I swear it was called ground. If a structure is moving, it also gets plus one. The bigger the structure, the slower it moves. So it's all very balanced. If the structures are of equal value, they destroy each other. If one is higher, it'll go through the other. That's really cool. Yeah, you can do so much strategy with that. Oh, as hard as you try, it's not additive. Huh. This isn't quite clicking yet, is it? Oh, it's gotta be bigger, I gotcha. Oh, I know how to make maths look fun. to get 50% added to your next microtransaction. Here are some examples without the numbers to show you it's not that hard. A moving wall will obviously beat a stationary wall. 
but a moving grounded wall will beat a moving non-grounded wall. And a moving wall will hit someone who doesn't have any wall. Here, Potato Salad does the right thing yep. and grounds his wall. Nice, good move. But then he kicks it, which ungrounds the structure, and you only get the movement bonus if it's moving fast enough. Remember that for later. Another mistake is to try and use a wall as a shield, but it's a stationary floating wall. So I clip this guy in the chin. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we gotta do that again. As a public safety notice, please double check that your walls are in fact grounded. Oh, that wall was not grounded? Yeah, no. All this quick maths, you'll naturally do it in your head. You won't actually think about the numbers. <sighs> For your sake, for one time only, I'll show you a sequence with the numbers. Now, this was all hand tracked, so that's why it looks really janky, but it illustrates how movement gives plus one and as objects slow down, they lose a point. And structures that go from ungrounded to moving, well, they stay the same, because although they lose it for being ungrounded, <laughs> they're moving, so they gain one. Now, let's watch that back in real time. Did I just flick your disc? Yes. Now that you know the fundamentals, you're ready to understand high level earth venting, but not see it yet. Patience. Let's go over the three pillars of gameplay that have evolved over the last year. I've already been over the first one, which is hit combos and skill tree video. And can you guess the second? It's defense. Trust me, it is in fact the best offense. We're gonna start with the obvious and build to the top defensive options. The first defense we've already covered. Someone's disking you, just pillar, bro. Structures are your first defense. The second is hitting something away. Like you can uppercut discs or balls if you get the right angle. Oh. But if a structure's too heavy, a simple straight or uppercut won't have enough force to push it back. So why not kick straight and uppercut at the same time? Dang, Ulvac took that hit like a champ, but let's see his defense again. Remember this one, it'll come back into play later. Oh. Much like in real life, if two people punch the same rock at the same time, it'll explode. So you can use that as defense. The reflex. Some people are just really good at it. Eventually, you'll unlock your first truly defensive move. Can you not? I'm trying to teach here. The parry. This created the first feedback loop of emergent gameplay because people really got good at parry. So we had to make faster moves to overcome parry. But then people just got even better at parrying. Oh damn, you actually parried that. All right, well, that wasn't a really good example because I should have got hit, but this guy, he got better at parrying. Oh, nice. So then you can do something cheeky like baiting someone's parry. <laughs> but what if you just spam parry? Oh, nice parry. I cake meant to say nice parry spam. Well, sometimes you can get away with it, but parry has a cooldown, and the timing is so tight that a lot of the time, even the fastest jazz hands won't be enough. Pretty quickly, everybody realized parry has a weakness. I mean, literally, it weakens a grounded structure that's coming towards you because parry ungrounds structures. Huh. So a second use of this move is emerging. But ignoring that, if we think in reverse, if a structure is ungrounded, we can ground it to make it stronger for defense. Or deadlier for offense. You know, if, if you're quick <laughs> enough to use it against your opponent. So yes, I lied to you. The first... First defensive move is actually ground. You're being real mature, Howard. I mean, stop. Do you guys reckon the Mandela effect is proof we're living in a simulation that's being tweaked ever so slightly and we have no record of these changes, but someone else is controlling our destiny? Personally, I don't think that. I just think we should be able to ask the question, that's all. Stomp is perfect for disc spam because you can return the disc twice as fast for twice the damage. But obviously, you can't ground something that's already grounded. All right, that's grounded already. That's already grounded, what am I doing? Wait, that's already grounded. Bad habit. If it can happen to the best of us, it can happen right, to you. Grounded. And literally, Biven is one of the best of us. Speaking of the top players in the world, do you see this number? Do you see how low I am there? I'm not even in the comma club. Now look at this number. It was zero, and now it's not zero because some people thought it would be funny to subscribe. I shouldn't be making videos, you shouldn't be watching them. We should all be playing Rumble. So it's not funny when you encourage me into a bad habit. If you have to subscribe, subscribe to number one, Bivin.
But I guess you can like the video if it helps more people see it and more people play Rumble. Anyway, where were we? Stomp can also fail if the structure is too high and that didn't ground. or you're too slow and you can end up stomping on yourself. When someone has flick or hold on an object, it needs to be low enough to the ground to stomp it. So you can get into repeat grounding to try and delay someone to do something like this. But after you parry or stomp something, you're going to want to return it to your opponent. Oh my, that was so nice. And if that's your goal, then why parry at all? Oh, good catch. Why not catch the object you're going to throw back? No, I had a good setup. So in high level play, we progressed from using parry or ground to hold in a lot of situations. Even if it was originally intended just as a move to throw stuff. It also has another yeah, major advantage over parry and ground. It works on both grounded structures oh, nice. and ungrounded structures. <laughs> oh, wow, nice. Thank you. It'll even work unintentionally. <laughs> oh, I've never oh, done that so before. <laughs> and I'll tell you, there is nothing more satisfying than stealing someone's structure. Stop it. <laughs> but then the community found the slingshot, which is using the momentum from when you first hold something and the structure gets into the correct position. If you punch as soon as you hold, you can shoot something right back instantly, usually at a faster speed too. Pretty quick, huh? Well, actually, this is super slow. Watch this guy. <laughs> that was Magic Kev. Probably the best player in the world. Rewatching the footage, I now know why his in game name is Ah. Uh. <laughs> to break a hold, you can hold someone else's hold with the same side hold. The fake out. But if you offset holding the hold, you can get stuck in a situation like this. Oh, that was so weird. But what is good defense without good movement? See, I told you disc jumping would come back into play. The Venn diagram overlap is so strong between the two, we're just going to talk about them together now. This clip is from 11 months ago by one of the then top players, SD... Estraw... Crab Mia. It's probably more like Straw Cab Mia. If you read it the other way around, it says, yeah, I'm backwards. Back... Right, there we go. You can see we didn't get our VR legs straight away, but now, thanks to people like SD Raw Crab, who I learned my moves from, a lot of people end up skipping sprint and then they have to move at a snail's pace. And subscribe to him. Sometimes the best defense is moving left and right. Like, look at this guy embarrassing me right now. Go to the next clip. And you use you use running? That's that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, the best players in Rumble use running. Oh, actually, this clip will make me look really good. Don't lose your nerve now. Maybe that's the key to Rumble content, only versing white belts. All you gotta do is hit me once. But I'm over here. You gotta punch where I am, not where I was. <laughs> Cocky bitch. Bitchaman. Huh. Bitchaman. Guess it's like a rock-based pun or something? I don't get it. Me down to such low health. Oh, nice, nice. That's oh, good. Oh, son, you suck, dude. <laughs> nah, I could never stomp a white belt. This is good early training. Yeah, for that you. was really nice. You man. lose. That's right. You're really good at this, honestly. <laughs> that was that was very good. So there's like a totem. The normal working speed is this, and just like in real life, running will be faster than walking. We're not even gonna finish this walking clip. It's so slow. So running will help you dodge, but defense isn't just about protecting yourself. It's also about protecting your structures from being destroyed before you can use them. Oh, there it is. That was cool. I've never seen anybody run with the wall. Cool to this guy, because he doesn't see how many times I hit myself whilst running with a wall. And he's probably never played someone like Mr. Mr. Oh, yes. Who can dash around with not one, oh my gosh, but two oh structures gosh. at a time and power. control. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've been trying to make that practical. You starting to see the complexity? All these moves start to compound, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You just saw the other movement option, dashing around. Look, he just parried whilst dashing and holding a structure. I can't believe what I see sometimes. Running and dashing have essentially the same speed, but each have their pros and cons. Running has a short startup time. However, like we saw, with running you can strafe, but with dashing you'd have to break line of sight to have the same movement. Not that I care about breaking line of sight. <laughs> oh, jeez, really good at that. 
stuff. It's more about playstyle preference. For example, I don't think I've ever seen Kenny dash. But then again, I've never seen him get hit. Hmm. What running doesn't have, however, is introducing the third dimension. Up. Okay. Okay, I keep doing it. It's gonna work eventually. Surely. Surely it works. Guys, oh, we yeah, have to watch fought, this clip. You? This is so embarrassing for me. I just... I'm just gonna skip ahead. <laughs> That's better. What that guy could have used was the flow stone, which gives you an aerial dash for a quick dodge or to aggressively close in or a double jump. And sometimes the best way to get around a structure is just to go above it. <laughs> but actually, I'm not joking. If you land on something, your feet have invincibility, I guess because of those steel cap shoes which hopefully I can take off one day when they release the cosmetic update. Oh, this mechanic is key to an aggressive aerial style. So don't discount it or question it because that's my playstyle. But what other shift stones can we look at? Because those weren't around at launch. Stubborn will let you cancel knockback and take one less damage after dashing or jumping. Time for the art of tanking damage. Stop taking only two damage. What is this? <laughs> I don't care, I'll take all the damage. I just gotta get close. <laughs> sure oh. you want that? No, 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 I changed my mind. <laughs> oh, nice. But that's more damage mitigation than defense. Adamant would be in that category too. What else is there? Oh my gosh, how could I forget the guard stone? It's literally in the name. Okay, maybe that's not a good thing to rely on. <laughs> You're still getting damaged though. It's helpful if you don't like disc spam. Maybe one day Magic will build it into his playstyle and change the meta forever. But until then, let's go back to moving. Ah, the disc jump. Surprisingly faster than dashing. And this is just the vanilla version. Interestingly, the 180 dash disc jump and the speed disc jump are about the same speed. Rewinding to March, that's when we got our second map, the pit, which had walls protecting you from flying off. Or at least oh. make it harder to fly off. So all of a sudden, aggressive big movements became viable. Oh my god. Where'd you go? Oh, nice. Disc straight jumps. You use it better than anyone. Speaking of speed discs, remember Newton's third law? Well, you could just use the speed disc as a back step. Oh. What's the proper way of doing a Korean backdash if you ask a pro? Back, back, neutral, back, down, back, back, repeat. But you do not repeat the back, back part. Oh, whoops, wrong game. Thankfully in Rumble, backstepping is a lot easier to execute. <laughs> back away, back away. Before we move on, I want to make a preemptive YouTube apology. Yes, I did manipulate my footage to make me look cooler when I actually got my teeth kicked in by FJM. The following is what actually happened. <laughs> oh no, you punished me. I'm sorry if you felt misled, but unfortunately I can't control how you feel. So really, if you think about it, that's on you. Oh, actually, there's a good clip at the end of this. Oh no. Whoa, no, not that again. The triple jump. Ah, uh, the triple jump. Now that's the kind of movement you don't want to do. It's a glitch where when there's too much lag, three jumps register instead of the max of two oh, and no. hit the kill ceiling. If I kill myself, then you can't get me. <laughs> Let me remind you, Rumble's still in early access, so there are a lot of glitches. I don't know what happened to you. It went right through you. <laughs> and sometimes they go in your favor. What the? Well, sometimes your opponent uses them against you. <laughs> He's... That worked really well hiding in the corner. I was not a problem. But the devs have done an awesome job to do hot fixes and work out all the kinks. For example, they changed the pit map so you couldn't hide anymore. At least that's what I thought. Come on. Until I played Plimbo. You just half inside a wall. I see mostly inside a wall who used the pushback to push his hitbox through the wall and protect himself. Should have stayed in the wall. You get the boulders. <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, there you go. Oh, nice one. Speaking of glitches <laughs> and back steps, look at this. What? I don't know how I didn't die. 
<laughs> um, excuse me? Is this admin abuse? What, what was the God mode? Hmm? What was that? It's happened to me too? That pounced off your head. <laughs> okay, look, that first guy, he was probably cheating, but I wasn't. I swear I wasn't. Let's break this down and understand why that happened. A structure needs to be at a certain speed to break on you. Too gentle, and it's just gonna bump off. It needs to be just the right speed. <laughs> that hit what? you! <laughs> it bounced up and hit you! You just pushed it into me! Let's say the minimum braking speed is 4 meters a second. Now if you're moving in the same direction as a structure, the relative speed might not be enough to damage you! I told you rumble was just maths! Now, these numbers are obviously all made up and I have no idea what I'm talking about, but you get the point, a back step can protect you. In fact, the pushback from a speed disc is pretty much just as fast as sprinting. Hey, wait a minute, what's drifting? And why is it so slow? To be honest with you guys, I scuffed my results. But if we look closely, drifting might have actually won. If I hadn't run into that structure someone put in my way, a technique I overlooked that FJM posted ages ago. Dashing and then using your straight knockback to add to your dash is really fast. Isn't emergent gameplay just beautiful? I know I'm jumping around a lot, so if you'd like these moves in order of their difficulty and a natural progression of how you would learn it, you can check out the skill tree I made below. Okay, what the heck was I even talking about? Oh yeah, pushback protection. It doesn't have to be as much pushback as a speed disc. Even if the timing window is smaller, a simple straight will give you the same protection. Which is what happened here. And if you duck as the structure's coming down on you, it's the same effect. See, I wasn't cheating. Just watch out, because it can work against you. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you punched it, but then the knockback got you? Dude, I punched it. And then it kept pushing me. I've never you, seen that. Yeah, you it didn't win. collide on you. You matched its velocity. And you can even use it offensively too, because with the protection, when an object doesn't break, it will add to your momentum and keep pushing you. So if you hit an opponent who's already in a knocked back state. Oh, dude, your disc perfectly hit me so it didn't break and it just pushed me off the edge. Oh, really? Unfortunately. Oh, like also, also, also. Momentum. If your pushback gets triggered at the same time you get hit, they will add together and your knockback will be doubled. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that was so much knockback. It's just like I was in the center. Wait, wait, rewind. That's another defensive option. You can use a cube to launch a structure before your opponent hits it and then hit the cube back at them. Add it to the list. Again, just make sure you're fast enough to actually use it. Oh, we just deflected that wall into it. Let's see Ulvac's perspective. Objects also need to hit each other at the correct speed to break. Too slow and they'll just push each other around. Or if they hit each other at a funny angle, you can cause a deflection. Oh my gosh. They could also ricochet out of each other. Oh, that was oh. interesting. Ricochet. That was pretty sick. <laughs> I was skeptical that this would be useful beyond oh, random so chance weird. until my friend Yeetmaster showed me his waterbending technique. Oh! Water bending. Let's go. Uh, explode honestly would need a video on its own. And this video is getting way too long. In short, when applied to a structure and that structure breaks, it will apply the structure's knockback in a radius to players and structures. So, if you quickly spawn a cube and put explode on it, it'll deflect anything that hits you. Oh, the shields. Explode will also unground a structure, meaning you can use it to break someone's hold and also weaken the structure. Hey, you guys remember that one time I ducked so perfectly that I cancelled out the damage? Well, <laughs> I actually ducked pretty slow there. Gotta shoot a little faster, man. When you duck, you won't be in the correct position to summon any objects. <laughs> but that doesn't stop you from instigating, say, a dash before you duck. <laughs> that was a nice uh, I tried to balance it up a little bit by spawning a wall, but it didn't work. That's a lot of tools in your toolkit, so don't get overwhelmed. I've watched like half the skill tree and then just stopped because I was overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> because Rumble is fun to learn at every level. And now that I've covered the three pillars of emergent gameplay, you can finally watch one of the greatest combat sequences I've ever had. And I can never make a video again and just play Rumble. Hang on a second. What's that in the middle of the Venn diagram? 
Oh, come on. I just want to play Rumble. Don't you even think about hitting that button. Don't hit that button. You'll encourage me. I don't need encouragement. Bullback with hold throws a wall at me. I use exploding disc to cancel his hold. Too slow and I wasn't crowded anyway. My slingshot counter fails. Again, I'm two steps behind. Ulvac has the ping advantage and he knows it. I dash to take center. Ulvac uses the precious window to set up flight. Reading his hands, I cube, then cube again to launch. The first to hit him in the air, the other. I straight uppercut to take out his flying cube. Doesn't matter though because he threads the needle. I'm ready for the falling cube. Ulvac instantly catches it for the counter play. I ground this time for a mix up instead for more damage. Ulvac doesn't want to eat cube so he jumps for center and flow dashes to get behind me. I save the cube and rotate to punish on landing. Ulvac cube launches its defense, but the cube is left in my range. Slingshot strap cut, but Ulvac had the same idea. And like in one of the very first clips, he straight uppercuts the cube into me. Oh my gosh, this game is amazing. When you play enough, it'll all just become instant, trust me. Now let's watch that again in real time. That's a disc <laughs> I did take that hit like a champ though, didn't I? I